So we saw that uh, in a model in which you have no matching cost, so rho is equal to zero, and the matching function is uh, as a parameter uh, gamma equal to one, uh, it's very easy to solve, uh, it's very easy to find the solution of the model uh, when we focus on uh, not tightness and output, which is a standard representation that we've used of the model, uh, but what we focus on uh, visits and tightness. And so the diagram that we have here is showing you how you can find the solution of the model in a case like this. And so it's at the intersection of two lines. So the first line that we have here is just saying that uh, you know, once you have the number of visits and the tightness is number of visits aggregated divided by capacity aggregated, which is k. And furthermore, uh, it's also telling you that that's one relation between visit and tightness. And then it's telling you also that um, households uh, anticipating the tightness, they are going to decide the number of visits to maximize utility. Um, and so the thing I want to show you is that um, what's nice about the model that we've uh, assumed is that actually, so we said that in terms of rationality, the model really assumed two things uh, from households. One, that they try to do the best they can, so maximize their utility given their budget constraint, which I think is pretty reasonable. But two, and that's you know, a stronger assumption, I think, is that they can anticipate what is, what the prevailing, uh, what the tightness, the prevailing tightness is going to be, you know, once all households, uh, once all households decide the number of visits. And that does require a lot of kind of introspection and understanding about the structure of the economy. Now, we said one way around that, that you could have a statistical agency that announces, that forecasts the tightness, people believe it, uh, and then, you know, and if the agency's goal is to be correct, because, you know, if not, let's say they get fired or something like this, uh, the agency is going to find the intersection of these two lines, is going to uh, announce the tightness X, people are going to uh, do the best they can given X, and X is indeed going to be realized. So in a case like that, we do find the intersection. The intersection of these two lines does give you uh, the tightness and number of visits that prevail, the agency is correct, and people were right to believe uh, the statistical agency too. If they hadn't believed them, then they would have ended up being wrong and that would have been costly to them. Um, so that's one way around it. Another way around it is that we could think of, instead of just thinking of a uh, one period model, we could think that this model that we've seen is actually repeated over time, uh, following, the, following uh, a certain process through which people learn what the tightness is going to be. So imagine that uh, imagine that you have uh, discrete time. Okay, and then imagine that uh, at time one, so first period, time t equal one, households, expect some tightness x, here b for belief, one, then then imagine that households uh, maximize utility given x b1, all right, and that, you know, we know what we know what would happen if they do that. We know that the number of visits at time one is going to be uh, given by this expression here. So we will have V1 is going to be lambda uh, plus sigma mu p. So it's going to be lambda x b1 plus sigma mu over p. Okay, and so from this, we know that the actual tightness x at 1 is going to be v1 over k. Okay, and so it's going to be uh, lambda x b1 plus sigma mu p over 1 over k. Okay, so this we know. So essentially what happens if we go back to this graph, what, what we've just said is that, imagine we start from here, we call this x b1, that's given. We know that households 
We are going to choose this number of visits. That's going to be V1. <coughs> and, and the actual tightness. Uh, right, and the actual uh, tightness is going to be right here. Because this second line links uh, visits to tightness. And so this is going to actually be x1. OK, so this is just what I've done so far. OK, and then imagine that then at time 2, how so they've learned. You know, they started from this first belief, and they saw that actually it wasn't realized, so you can see here, you know, there's a gap between these two. Uh, there's a gap, so actually households were incorrect, which means that given the realized tightness, you know, um, the number of visits that they've picked wasn't optimal, uh, so they want to adjust. And, and, and let's assume that the adjustment is very simple. Uh, then at time two, households, you know, they see that all oh, tightness actually X1, so households are going to expect x belief at time two that's just equal to x1 so they just learn like this in a very uh, simple fashion okay and then you know and then continuing then uh, then we assume that after that households are going to max their utility given x b2 which is just equal to x1 okay and so on and so forth until t goes to infinity okay so they just learn that way and so then we can represent what's going to happen so at time one household were here at time two they are going to assume they are going to assume that tightness is x1 the optimal tightness in a case like the optimal number of visits is given here so you get V2 here. The, as a result, the tightness in period 2 is going to be here. That's X2. Then in period 3, they're going to expect X2. They're going to go here, and so on and so forth. The tightness will be realized here. And so what you can see is that uh, through this process, so starting here, then going here, then going here, then going here, then here, and so on. Eventually, what we can see is that as time goes to infinity, the um, the households are going to learn the tightness x that was the solution of our static model and they, and they are going to uh, and we can see that the tightness is going to convert to x infinity uh, to the intersection here and the number of visit v infinity is going to be the number of visit of the static model okay and you can see that the same would have happened if instead of uh, starting from a tightness that's too low if we had started from a tightness that's too high uh, the exact same thing would have happened if it's uh, very nice. So let's say we had started here. Instead, with this belief, then households, the optimal tightness to the number of visits to play would have been here. And then the tightness that would be realized would have been here. And then uh, if you believe this, then the optimal number of uh, visits would have been here. And then the tightness realized would have been here and so on and so forth. Um, and then again, uh, starting from a different belief, we would also have converged to uh, the number of visit and tightness that uh, come out of, uh, of, our, of our static model. This here is the static um, solution that we're always converging to. Um, so I think that's a very nice property of our model is that um, even if households are not able to uh, 
anticipate what the realized tightness would be, or even if there is no statistical agency that's able to forecast tightness correctly for them. Uh, if we, you know, if household learn in that in that very simple way, and you have a sequence of the static model, the, uh, we are going to converge eventually uh, to our static solution. And so, in that sense. You know, the static model that we've uh, discussed, you can say if we use a language of economics, it's the steady state of a dynamical model in which you have this simple learning. If we use a language from physics, uh, we would say that our static model is the equilibrium of the dynamical model. Uh, and so I think that's a nice property of uh, the solution of the model is that it's the equilibrium of a simple dynamic extension where people learn slowly. Um, and in economics, people use the word equilibrium a lot. Um, most of the time, you know, so when people use equilibrium, sometimes what they mean is solution of the model, and they should say that if that's what they mean. Um, sometimes they don't mean anything. Um, and sometimes more in, in game theory, an equilibrium concept is a way to close your model when people have to anticipate things, when people have to believe things. Um, and often, I mean, equilibrium concepts are basically, you know, um, they are fixed point of the model. And by imposing, you know, that allow, uh, that allow researchers to close the model and, you know, figure out either what the beliefs of the agents are or what their anticipations are. But you impose this equilibrium concept as a way uh, to reduce the number of endogenous variables of the model uh, by imposing some kind of circularity uh, condition, some, some kind of internal consistency. And that's usually, you know, since, uh, the, the, since Nash, this is usually solved uh, by solving a fixed point theorem. So you're looking for a fixed point uh, of a more complex model. Um, but so here we only talked about solution of the model, but you can see it as the equilibrium uh, of uh, repetition of the static model, which I think is uh, is quite nice. And I should say it's also something that the Valrasian model doesn't have. You can't really think, and that's something that's discussed in the Valrasian literature. It's hard to think of the Valrasian model as a model in which you you know you converge. Uh, you're going to converge towards the Valrasian equilibrium uh, slowly over time uh, through a process such as the one that I've highlighted here for our matching model. Um, 